second week, first video lecture. I'm going to try to have the video lectures for you guys on YouTube. So for those of you who <coughs> have a tablet or an iPad or an iPhone or an Android, you will be able to watch the class on any one of those devices. Okay? So instead of downloading a zip that you have to unzip and then open and then with a video with a video player or whatever, um, I will start publish pushing my video on YouTube. Now, what it really disappoints me is when I get a message from and to pick up on one specific uh, online student, but by no means he's not the only one. Okay. I try to reach and get hold of this guy from August 26, and I do not get a response until today at 3:26 p.m. This is two weeks within the semester. Okay? Apologies, I didn't understand on my first reading of the assignment that we needed to email you about our chosen topic. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, what? What is this guy say talking about? Okay, so I go into, for instance, video lectures from week one. And I'm going to take a look at, within the last week, the student that watched my video lectures. And what do I see? <coughs> that many of the students have not, I'm sorry, this is the wrong class. And what I see is that many of the online students are not even taking or downloading my 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 media lectures. So you're not finding out what's due really. From ID Yeah. Thank God. Okay, so now we're going back to video lectures. Okay, so I'm going to go and take a look at who has viewed my video lecture within the last week, right? And it could be like just view or post on it, whatever. And I see that many of my online students, specifically this gentleman, like I said, I don't want to pick on him, but he's an example of one of the many online students. And, and those of you who are in the classroom, you know, I know you're here. You don't have to watch them if you don't want. But if you don't remember anything or you ask me questions through course messages that were on the video lectures and I see that you are not watching my video lectures, then come on. Anyway, we're already two weeks into the semester. You guys are have to turn in a static website. A static website. Complete static website with 10 pages at least working in six weeks okay if you guys don't know by now what you're supposed to be doing it on or you have not contacted me to get the approval of the theme then you're in trouble you're already behind so please try to make the most out of the resources I'm trying to give the same experience to the online students that the classroom students have anyway enough of that so for tonight I have shared with you guys those of you that are online okay hold on I am going to start a join me session here because I also want any who's not here in the classroom or who is online that would like to join me on the course can also do that live and ask questions
I'm gonna have to bring my own network cable. This wireless is too slow. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Is that one of those spares that you have on your pocket? There you go. Okay, so... Let's try this again. All the students, computer information systems, some counts are not suspended. I add the filter. Okay. Okay, now those of you that have, I know some uh, some people have tried it on the iPhone, I have an Android. Those of you who have an Android can go to Google Play and download the Join Me version. And you can actually watch my class live on your Android. Okay, all you have to do is type those nine numbers and you can watch it. It's kind of a little small, but you know what? The screen isn't that high resolution anyway in this classroom, so it's not going to be that bad. What I really want to see is, I want to see who viewer one is, viewer two and viewer three, so if you may, it's just common netiquette to identify yourself. Thank you. Okay, now as far as the <coughs> the conference will begin when the next party joins. So I'm already connected. Those of you that are online can actually hear me okay you can connect and you can hear me if you're not present in this classroom you can hear me through the internet phone all right I can't hear anything okay hello Armando can you hear me Alistair has joined. Via internet. Okay. So I have shared with some of you guys, actually with everybody, 
um, two video lectures, video lecture one and video lecture two, that talk about the basic HTML. Okay, so I'm not going to be covering that in much detail. I expect you guys to download them and watch them. Okay, and this is the code that I cover in those video lectures. What I'm going to be spending time tonight is on actually setting up my environment from scratch. Okay. All right, somebody just join in to the conference. <clears throat> Whoever just joined in, who is this? Okay, Armando. Cool. All right, so anyway. What I want to do is I want to actually show you how to set up the environment live, okay? Because I do not show that on either one of these two video lectures. But once we set up the development environment, you guys see how I do it? I'm going to show you how to import this week's source code, which is I expect that you guys will do outside this classroom and play with it, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set up my Eclipse on my C drive. So, I'm just going to take my Eclipse for web. which is currently Eclipse JavaScript. This guy. Okay? And I'm just going to delete it. Totally. Remember, Eclipse is not any of those MSI or Microsoft installation files or executables that you know you have to install and go through the Windows registry or anything like that. So you can just get rid of it like that by deleting it. Then I will go into Moodle and Eclipse for PHP developers. And here it is. This is the one that I'm going to download the 32-bit, like I said, because I have a Windows 32, Windows XP 32-bit version. That's redundant. So I'm going to um, download it. PHP Helios SR2. <coughs> Save it. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to set up the um, the MySQL. So the MySQL, no, I should say the Apache. Let's set up the Apache. Uh, some of you contact me, by the way, about downloading the the WAMP. That's in fact, it's such a bad idea. What is WAMP? WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, all integrated into one. Okay, 
So in essence, you will be downloading Apache the web server, MySQL the database server, and PHP the, the uh, PHP interpreter all in one package and download it. Okay, you can do that. And there's also um, a lamp for Linux. Of this one. So I'm going to use the PHP, Eclipse PHP, and I'm going to unzip it. So you just go into the file that got that get downloaded and you extract everything. My suggestion is just put it off the C drive. I mean you can put it pretty much anywhere you want, but typically I have all my Eclipse installations of my C drive. So I have an Eclipse for Java and I have an Eclipse for PHP. I have expl Eclipse for other specific types of uh, development environments. Okay, so you, you will just rename it as PH Eclipse, whatever you want to call it. I want to call it uh, Web. Eclipse Web. Oh, it's still unzipping. Come on. Finish extracting. to not confuse it with all the other Eclipse, I'm just going to call it Eclipse Web. <coughs> okay, and then I'm going to put on my C drive. So far so good? Everybody with me? Okay. So now, uh, and this is one step that I cover in... Um, in a previous lecture, uh, you got to make sure that you have your JDK installed. If you haven't done that, then please do so. The JDK is the Java Standard Edition, which Eclipse relies on to be able to run. You can install the 6, the 7, whatever you want. Okay, it's um, for Windows it's probably uh, an executable right here. So this is for 64-bit machines and this is for 32-bit machines. In my case, I already have installed and you can verify this on your Windows by going to your program files I can find them somewhere in here. Program files, Java, and whatever JDK you have, that's the one that you have installed. I have them all. Five, six, and seven. If we go by date installed, the last one was one five. I must have installed some backward compatibility. <clears throat> okay. So how do you know which one is working? So this is how you know. You go and run from the command prompt. You run java dash 
version. And it will tell you what Java is your default on your machine. So mine is my default is 16027, which is this guy. Okay? You don't need all of them. Just install one if you haven't done so already. Not a JRE, a JDK. And the difference is the JDK contains everything that the JRE contains plus a lot more. The compiler and all that other stuff. This is all CSIS 3100. So you guys should already know that. Okay? All right. So you have your JDK. You have your Eclipse. What else do you want to do? I suggest you bump up a little bit the memory on it. So if you go into the Eclipse folder, you will find an Eclipse.ini. You open that file with any editor like Notepad++, and you will see that this is the minimum amount of memory that it will require, and this is the maximum amount of memory. Just increase the maximum to 512, just a little bit. You know, I don't have that much memory myself. I only have like three and a half gigs. Probably not even, because it's Windows XP. Um, so 512 is fine. Okay, save it, exit, and now we execute it. Now what I like to do is, I like to have it in a link here so that I can open it any time. So you just right click on the executable and tell it to pin to the start menu. Okay, so now here you have it. Eclipse. I rename it as Eclipse for web. All right. And then I just click on it, and this is the first time that I'm running it, right? So it should ask me, where do you want to work? What's your workspace? In the meantime, while it's thinking about it, I am going to delete my previous workspace. The workspace is nothing else than a folder that contains a hidden folder called that metadata. Okay? You get rid of that metadata, you got rid of your workspace. You don't have to delete everything inside the folder. Okay? So now, where do you want this workspace to be? No, I do not want it to be under document settings, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make it under off the C drive and it's going to be called sites. The first eight weeks we're going to be working off the workspace sites. It's going to be plain static HTML pages. That means you're going to put HTML, you're going to put cascading style sheet, and you're going to put JavaScript files. That's all you're going to do. Later on, the next following eight weeks, you guys are going to be working from a different workspace because now we're going to be adding PHP to the equation. So as you can see, the dot metadata just got created. Any questions so far? Those of you online, any questions so far? Come on, Alistair, you're here. <laughs> okay. What was it?
was that question? I have a clip of my programming class. Is there a different version of Glitz or is it all the same? They're not the same. They're not the same. That's why we're going through the... I mean, if it were the same, it wouldn't make sense for me to indi to tell you to do all this stuff. You would have already done it. Uh, the first time, at least in Windows XP, will ask you, hey, there's one security risk, whatever. Just unblock it so that it allows you uh, to run clips freely. And this is what you get the first time. Okay? You just want to go directly to the workbench. This is what the workbench looks like the first time that you go in. Okay? So it's going to have the PHP perspective. Okay? So this is the reason why it's different, because in your programming class you didn't cover PHP, you covered Java, so you will have the Java perspective. It's totally different. Now, how do, what do, how do you know what you have installed in here? <clears throat> well, one of the ways is you go into the About, Eclipse uh, Help About, and you go into the Installation Details and it will tell you the stuff that is installed here okay and the installation history and the features web tools this is what it's going to allow you to uh, edit HTML pages okay and the plugins these are the plugins that it has uh, installed Apache stuff okay your Eclipse for Java will have different features and different plugins. Okay? All right. So now, I'm a student. I go into Moodle. Okay, and I've been asked to download the source code for this week. So I'm going to download it. And I'm going to download it into my C sites. Okay. CSIS thirty twenty. Week two, save it. Okay, and then I just unzip it. Which, by the way, this is exactly what I do when I grade your stuff. Okay, I download your zip, I unzip it into my workspace and then I import it and then run your code so I'm going to extract it here I'm going to say yes to all what did it just do? it created a folder called CSIS3020 week 2 so I go back to Eclipse and I right click on my PHP this is the Explorer Okay. this is the guy that has all the different projects in my Eclipse I'm going to go and right click on it and I'm going to say import import into Eclipse import what? import an existing project from the general section you're going to find an existing project into the workspace so the zip that I just downloaded and unzipped is an existing project I created it in a previous session whatever Next. So what's the root directory? Well, the root directory that I want you to look for projects is sites. And then it will go through the entire folder and look at all the projects that are in there. And it's going to bring them to you and say, this is the list of all the projects that I have. 
Okay. In your case, if, the f if it's the first time that you created the workspace, you're going to find one and only one. In my case, I have a whole lot. So here it is, CSIS 3020 week 2. I select it, finish, and it just imported it. Okay? Notice that this is not a PHP project. That's why it shows in here in the folder, and I don't know if you guys, it's, I know it's really tiny and small, but it shows an icon that says JS, which stands for JavaScript. It's a web static project. Okay? If you expand it, you will see that it only contains one folder called web content. If you expand it, you will see that web content contains a whole bunch of HTML files. And it contains two folders. Buttons, which contains images, and images, which contains other images. This is week two project. And if you guys download the video lecture, that I, the two video lectures that I share with you on Moodle, you will see that I will go through each one of these. Okay? One by one, I go through each one of these and explain all the different HTML tags. Questions so far? Okay. I am going to be developing my own project in front of you every class session. And the stuff that I do in mine is what I expect you guys to do on yours. Okay? So what I want you to do for next week is the following. You already know what your theme is. You already know what your problem statement is. I want you to go out there and look for a template. For a template that will give you a quick start on your project. The look and feel that you like, that you that makes sense for the theme of your project. And I'm going to refer to mine. As you guys know or should know already, there is a wiki. And you and I are going to be co collaborating for in the next six eight weeks on this wiki. This is my wiki. Okay? And it looks really bad when I go into somebody's wiki and... Oh, okay. It's cool now. And it shows no page whatsoever. Okay. Cool. That's what I want to see. I want to see everybody engaged. When I try a few of them are like, eh, no homepage. Okay. So you guys can take a look at mine. Some of you are like, oh, I don't know how to do a page. I don't know how to link to a page. Go and look at mine. You go to mine, you see the page, and you have the rights to edit it. So you go to edit, and you see the source code. This is the source code of my page. And I think I already went through this last class, didn't I? You want to create another page? You put the name of the page between square bracket, square bracket. That creates a link. When you click on that link, it will ask you, do you want a new page? And you make it an HTML page. And then you start putting content. Okay. I expect to see a title on every single one of the pages that you create in your wiki. Okay. I have noticed that some of you have not done that. 
Anyway, what's the theme of my project? Timex. It's the online timesheet system. What is that? Okay, let's dive into it. Let's go into the problem statement and find out what the heck am I developing in front of you this semester. We need to build an online timesheet system. Why? Our employees currently submit their weekly hours worked using a paper-based timesheet system that is manually intensive and error-prone. Okay? We require an automated solution for submitting employee hours worked in the form of an electronic timesheet. So you're already thinking about this web that is going to present a timesheet somehow Monday through Friday or Monday through through Sunday, depending on the company hours and policies and whatnot, where, where, where the employees can go and put the time or the amount of hours worked for those specific days, right? In the form of an electronic timesheet, approving them. So somebody, my boss, he or she, will be approving or disapproving that timesheet and paying for the time work for a particular department. So I am putting all this time against a particular department that I work for. I work for sales, I work for IT, I work for payroll, whatever. Okay? And then there's going to be a department in the company, i.e. human resources, payroll, whatever, that is going to actually convert those timesheets that have been approved into a paycheck. Okay. In addition, we would like to have automatic notifications of timesheet statuses changes. That means that when I am creating my timesheet, and I'm done Monday through Wednesday, and I save it, my timesheet is still pending. I'm not finished with it, because the week is not finished. But by Friday, when I'm done with everything that I had to work, I can submit it. At that point, the status of my timesheet changes from pending to submitted. And my boss will get a notification that I have submitted my timesheet. He or she will go and approve or disapprove it. If it's being approved, then human resources will get a notification saying this is ready for payment. If it's being disapproved, I will get a notification saying, uh uh, buddy, you did not work 80 hours this week. Okay? So, you have to go again, modify it, and resubmit it until it gets approved. Got it? So, those are the statuses changes and a weekly reminder to submit and approve employee timesheets. Employees should be able to see all their timesheets with their hours worked and also their equivalent paycheck. So, you can go back in history and say, let me check what did I do four weeks ago? And you can actually see the timesheet that you submitted and you can see the paycheck, the equivalent paycheck for that timesheet in that week. Okay? President of the company must be able to see all the hours work in a given week. So the president, the vice presidents report to him, and the, each one of the vice presidents, the managers report to them, and each one of the managers will have employees that report to them, and you can see the hierarchy, the corporate hierarchy, the president must be able to see everybody's, and there should be a, a report, a cumulative report of all the hours worked by everybody in the company in a given week. Human resources should be able to pay or stop payment on time she submitted and approved. This is a one paragraph 10 or so sentences, okay, that gives me a very high level of what I'm building, okay? doesn't have to be the specifics of how I'm going to do it, but it says, listen, this is a website that is going to supply this service, that is going to uh, fix this need, or whatever. And that's what I'm expecting from you all this week, which is due tonight at 6 o'clock, or was due tonight at 6 o'clock, but I think I'm giving you an extension until midnight or something like that. Okay? In very simple words. Why? Because you have to understand what you're building. When you have to actually come up with this narrative, 
You have to know what you're building. And if it's not clear, go ahead and redo the sentence until it's clear. And what I want you to do is once it's clear to you and to me what you're building, then what I want you to do is I want you to highlight the nouns in this narrative. Because those nouns are going to be the entities, the key players in your system. In my case, timesheet, employee, hours, department, time, payment, the precedent, notifications are important entities in my system. Yes, Jonathan. Right. And at this point, we don't care. The question was, I, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, the nouns could be related to objects or it could be related to tables. And at this point, we don't care. We don't want to get into that detail yet. We want to know just, take the narrative, literally, take the narrative, and obviously only one timesheet. If there's more timesheet nouns, then just pick one, right? But take the nouns, just the nouns, out of the narrative, and put them in this list. What I do is I put them on, on the on the home page. These are the nouns of my narrative. You will see, and this is a very effective methodology. It's one of the many uh, uh, agile development method uh, methodologies, but this is a very effective one. You will see that these guys will either become objects in your system, okay? Or they will become properties of the objects in your system. And we're going to see what that means later on. Most probably the objects, the main guys, are going to end up being tables in your database. While the attributes or properties of those will end up being just fields in a specific table in your database. Okay? But you have to have this high-level narrative and then start picking out the important guys and then later on determine, we're going to see how, how to do that, later on determine whether these entities are really important, hence objects, or just attributes of those objects. Okay? So now that we have a clear picture of what I am building, I went out there and I started looking, I don't know, HTML templates. And I think I did this, didn't I do this last week? Uh, sort of, kind of. And I went to HTML, you know, first, the first bit is free professional HTML templates. And I know what I'm building, so I'm going to start spending some time navigating the net and finding out which one makes sense and which one has the look and feel that I want for my for my project okay in my case after spending a little bit time on it I think I came up with I try to remember the name of my template And I have just have too much stuff. Uh, ah, here it is. Aged beauty template. And I found it on their website templatesonline.com. This is my template. I decided that my time sheet, online timesheet system will look nice on this template. Okay? It has the logo that I like. It has the look and feel that I like. Now, next week, I'm going to ask you to show me what that template is. Your homepage. 
Okay? I don't want anybody to be just sending me this Latin crap that I see here, okay? I want to see this template customized to your website. So in other, in other words, it's going to have where is it's going to have Where do I have my home page? Is this my home page? Something similar to this. Okay. This is a snapshot of a real page. Okay? And that's what I want you to start building on your wiki. Snapshots of your real pages. For next week is the snapshot of your home page. This this is the template that I got. As you can see, it doesn't make sense for timesheet, online timesheet. And this is the customized version of it for online timesheet. This is what I want you to produce for next week. Okay? This template I like because it's very simple, to the point. And when you download it, when you download it, you're going to get you're going to get a zip file. Okay? When you open this zip file, you should get an HTML page and a CSS page. An HTML page and a CSS page. You will also have a folder with images. Okay? zip files on render. Uh, a folder with images. These are the images that my template need in order to render the look and feel that I like. It's basically four images. Okay? Now, my suggestion, if I haven't done so already, is to use Firefox. HTML usually will render the same on all the different browsers. Firefox, IE, Chrome, Safari, blah, 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 right? However, there are some HTML tags that are not compatible across all the browsers. What am I going to use to grade your website? Firefox. So I suggest if you are going to make sure that your website works, try it on Firefox. Another reason is Firefox has a really cool um, plugin called Firebug. 
okay and you guys can go and download Firebug for Firefox Firebug okay right now they're into the 1.12 and you will get this tool I already have it where you can actually take a look at your page and dissect the HTML code that is rendering your page okay so I'm going to dissect right now my home page the home page that, uh, that I um, Download it from my template and customize as my home page. So I can see all the different parts of it. So how do you do that? You just point anywhere in your page where you want to start. Let's say I'm going to start in this picture. And I just inspect this element with Firebug. Here it is. This is Firebug in, act in action. So you will see the HTML page in here. And you will see the cascading style sheet on this right hand side that make up that makes up that element. Okay? And the really cool thing about it is you can actually hove over the code and it will highlight in the page where is that code render it so this is an h1 and this is a whole div and this inside another div much bigger div and it's inside the body okay So as you guys can see, and I'm just going to review very quickly, because this is something that I covered in the first two video lectures, an HTML page is made out of a header and a body. In the header, you put the stuff that does not get rendered, but many search engines look for, like metadata and the title, which gets put on the on the page okay but nothing that you put in here will get rendered and the body this is what everything you put in here will get rendered okay now in this case my page it's made made of a div a division whose ID is called header and you can actually see what section is that so this is the header this is the page that's another div and this is the footer so my page is a header a page or I'm sorry my web page is a header a page and a footer and then you dive into the page and you see there is a div called content this is the prime real estate for those of you who are new to web design this is the prime real estate in a web page okay this is where you should put your main contact your eye candy because that's what users are going to be looking users of your website are going to be looking most of the time okay so remember around the center of the web page you put the content on the peripheral side of the page left hand side top you put logos navigational stuff okay but this is the prime real estate content what else do we have on their page? We have sidebar.
and I know it's really tiny but that line is also a division that line on the bottom okay and then you start diving into the content and you see that there's three divs in the content the welcome div the sample one div and the sample two divs. Okay. Now, what's the really cool thing about this? And I'm going to do what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go into the page and actually I'm going to. edit the index HTML page with notepad plus plus for now okay and in the header part there is a reference to the CSS it's actually a tag called link that says go into this folder and find a file called default CSS. Okay, the CSS is a cascading style sheet fo uh, file. That's the one that gives it the look and feel of the web page. I'm going to delete it. Okay, and then I'm going to re-render this page. So I'm going to refresh. This is the page, the same page that you guys were looking at. Okay? This is the page rendered with just the plain content. We have in here an H1. We have in here, and I'm going to use the reverse. I'm going to see where in the code is this. I see in here a line item, and this one is another line item. You guys see that? So this was supposed to be the menu up there. This is how the HTML gets rendered when it doesn't have any cascading style sheet. Then you see the main content. And then you see the navigational part. And then you see the footer. Okay? Now, the cool thing about this is that you can create an HTML page with one content and take many different cascading style sheet and apply it to the HTML page and have a totally different look and feel of the same content. Okay? So that's exactly what I want you guys to start understanding because in this class, the cascading style sheet is irrelevant to me because you're grabbing it from some template somewhere. The content, the construction of the content of the website is the key in this class. And initially, it's going to be hard-coded. You guys are going to produce 10 pages, hard-coded. This is a snapshot of an employee entering a, a uh, timesheet. This is a snapshot of the president's report. This is a snapshot of a paycheck. And you guys will produce those static HTML pages the first eight weeks with whatever look and feel that you want. You can change it throughout the middle of the semester if you want to. 
but it's the content that I want to drive at. Because the following eight weeks, all that content is going to come out out of a database. And you guys have to be able to produce this database and query the database, grab that data, and present it in such a way that, to me, I don't know if it's static, if it's a static page or a PHP database-driven page. And that's your goal, to make it look identical. In fact, when you turn in the last version of your PHP project, I'm going to go and look at your static HTML web page. And I'm going to compare them. See if the one that renders dynamic, uh, dynamically out of a database looks the same as the static one. You got it? OK. So I am replacing the old link to the cascading style sheet and refreshing and we're back to the same old page. Are there any questions? No questions? Alright, so let's take a break. It's 7.18. Let's come back at 7.30.